Please be seated. Good morning. morning. Welcome to this beautiful, blustery Sunday morning in the month of February. Our Heavenly Father has made for us to come together as a congregation and praise, prayer, worship, song, and celebration. The announcers that are in the bulletin, obviously, Pastor and Karen are not with us this week. Unfortunately, Pastor, Pastor Scherner came down positive with COVID last Wednesday, so he's, they are in quarantine. So our prayers will go out to the family. We thank George for stepping forward to lead this, help with the service this morning. Our announcements concern from the congregation at this time. George? Thank you, Dave. As Dave said, Pastor has tested positive, but he's doing much, much better. And my non-medical opinion is that had he not been on a five-day quarantine, that he probably would have come today. But he's going to obey the doctor's rules of five, five days, but he's doing much, much better. Um, as I told Dave and a couple others, it's, it's kind of frightening when the pastor calls you in the middle of Wednesday afternoon and says, hi, how are you doing? And you say, fine. He says, you're preaching Sunday. <laughs> and uh, I said, oh, okay. And uh, it went from there. And I reminded him that uh, today is communion, And uh, he thought for a minute, and I said, uh, so what do we do about consecrating or blessing or sanctifying, whatever the word is, for communion elements? And uh, he thought again, and I said, if I bring them over, can you do what needs to be done? And he said, yes. So the wafers and the wine have been blessed, and it's, it's up, if you wish to not partake because it's David and I, that's fine, we understand, but we have followed protocol. The Council Appreciation Dinner is still on for this afternoon following worship service, so if you, those members who are attending, if you will go down in the fellowship hall after church, we will get started. The installation of new council members will be held next Sunday. And then following worship service next Sunday, we will have our regularly scheduled council meeting. Um, We're glad that you're all here to worship with us. And uh, those of you that don't believe there's wind on the hill, if you've gone through the parking lot, you know that the south wind is greeting everyone. So good morning. And if you will, stand and we'll turn to page 56 for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. We will now go to page 57. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, 
for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. We will now pray in unison the prayer of the day found in your bulletin insert. Stand watch over your family, O Lord, that we who depend entirely on your heavenly grace may also be protected in the mighty fortress of your love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading from the Old Testament is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep on, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. 
Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn to be healed. Then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is a desolate waste and the Lord removes people far away and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. Here ends the first reading. We will now read responsively by verse Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, beginning with verse 12b. Strive to excel in building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil, but in your thinking, be mature. Here ends the second reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let your, down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word, I will let down the nets. And when he had done this, he enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. 
From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. We will now sing the first two verses of hymn 403. Please be seated. Now, I know some of you are fishermen, and so I'm going to relate a little fishing tale, and then we'll tie it into the, the sermon topic. One day, two fishermen were fishing in a nearby pond. Both of them were looking forward to have a fresh fish afterwards. They both had packed utensils, cooking accessories, ingredients, and fishing equipment. Once they arrived at the pond, they chose to sit at a distance to hunt for fishes. The first fisherman caught a big, beautiful fish within minutes. He was very happy. He then placed the fish in the ice box to retain its freshness. He would cook the whole fish at noon. He caught a few more small fishes after a while, he froze those few fishes to take home. After about an hour of fishing, the first fisherman offered to help the second fisherman. The second fisherman politely declined. And then the second fisherman also caught a large fish. Surprisingly, he threw it back into the pond. The first man was bewildered by this act. He remained silent as he watched the second man capture many big fishes only to have them thrown back into the water. The first fisherman, annoyed by this action, retorted, Why are you throwing the fishes back into the water? They are big and beautiful. The second fisherman replied, I know they were big, but I don't have a big pan to cook those big fishes, so I'm looking for a smaller fish that fits my cooking pan. The first fisherman was startled by the response. He advised the second fisherman to cut the big fish into pieces to fit them into the small pan. Many of us are just like the second fisherman. We tend to overlook a handful of opportunities, chances, and even fortune that come our way because we're too stubbornly looking for what we want. We need to learn to capture every opportunity and to work it out so that it will fit into our lives per perfectly. Today's gospel lesson deals with a fish story, but in a different way. From last week's gospel lesson in Luke 4, Jesus was going about the countryside preaching and teaching. In addition, he was healing the sick and casting out demons. He said of himself, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. Word of his actions was spreading to everyone, and people were looking for him. This is the backdrop of today's gospel lesson. The setting is by the lake of Gennesaret, better known today as the Sea of Galilee. People are crowding around him, listening to the word of God. He is on the shore of the sea, and he sees two fishing boats nearby. They are empty, and the fishermen are washing their nets. Fishing was done for the day. Jesus climbs in the one boat and asks the owner, Simon, to put out a little from shore, and Jesus proceeds to teach to the people from there. 
Now comes the main action of the reading. Notice the interaction between Simon and Jesus. Jesus had finished his preaching and said to Simon to go out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered respectfully, notice the wording, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Notice that Simon addresses Jesus as Master and does what he is asked by saying, because you say so. How would you have responded? You've worked all night, you've not caught any fish, you are tired, and this non-fisherman tells you to go out and cast your nets, nets that you were just washing. But when Simon does as he's told, the nets become so full of fish that the nets are breaking. In fact, Simon signals to the other fishermen, James and John, to come help. Both boats become so full of fish that they begin to sink. How can this be? Is this an example that if we follow Jesus' instructions, good things may happen? Remember, just a minute ago, I mentioned the respect Simon had for Jesus. Notice his words and actions at this point. The reading says that Simon falls at Jesus' knees and says, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. But note the response Jesus gives to Simon and also James and John who are helping him. Don't be afraid. From now on you will catch men. It then says they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. This is the beginning of the calling of the first disciples, the fishers of men. Maybe to put this in perspective, here are some facts about this kind of fishing. It is mostly done at night when the fish are more active and they cannot see the nets. Since there are two boats involved, they are using a drag net. The net is dropped into the water and secured to the boats. The boats will move in towards shore. The net drags along the sea bottom as they go. The fish are trapped in the net and then retrieved at the shore. It is physical labor to fish this way. In the morning, the fish have to be cleaned and sold. The nets have to be cleaned by washing and repaired. By dragging the nets on the sea bottom, sticks, stones, and other debris have to be removed and any small tears or holes have to be repaired. This is a long, arduous process that can take hours. Only then can the fishermen go home to sleep before returning to do the same tasks the next night and the morning after. With this in mind, if you were Simon, how would you have responded to Jesus when he told Simon to go out to deep water? Also, it is midday, the worst time for fishing. Your nets are clean, you are tired, and you caught nothing the night before, but yet Simon does what he is asked, and look at the reward. This event leads to another situation. They are fishermen and have just made the catch of a lifetime. But it says, when they had brought the boats to land, they left everything and followed Jesus. Again, what would you have done? Is this the power of Jesus working in these men's lives? What are the implications or meanings for us based on this gospel lesson? Here are some questions to think about. What gifts do you feel God has given you? And how do you think God wants you to use your gifts as you follow Jesus? What would it mean for you to be catching people for Jesus? In order to catch people for Jesus, what do you have going for you that is good bait? Something that helps draw people to Jesus. Here are four biblical commentators' thoughts. See if you agree with them. J.C. Ryle says, We are to go straight forward when Jesus says go and do a thing boldly, unflinchingly, and decidedly when Jesus says do it. We are to walk by faith and believe what we don't see now to be right and reasonable 
but we shall see hereafter. Dr. Joshua Mack says, We sometimes think faith is demonstrated most through what we say at church or in religious settings, but sometimes the best, best way faith is revealed is in how we act in ordinary situations when God's word conflicts with what we think. If we are really listening, as Luke puts the glory of Jesus on display, we should be asking, can a person like me really be loved and used by a person like him? Jeremy Myers says, though fish are caught to die, people are rescued to live. Jesus is asking persons to learn and follow a completely new way of life, a life of mission, ministry, and service among people who saw themselves as sinners. Just as Simon had been caught by Jesus, so Jesus was calling Simon to catch others. Now Jesus was asking Simon to do something that seemed even more foolish. He was asking Simon to leave it all behind and follow Jesus in pursuit of something even more valuable, to follow Jesus in catching men. And finally, Stephen Cole says, the word catch literally means to capture alive. Although in their vocation, the fish the fishermen caught would die, in their new focus, dead men would be caught and come alive for Jesus. This story shows how Jesus transforms everyday people, even sinful people like Simon, into his servants involved in this great course of catching people for God. So I ask each of you, are you living for Christ's purpose for your life? Because you have met Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, your life is not your own. You no longer are living for selfish purposes. You live to glorify Jesus Christ and to use the gifts he has given you to help in the great cause of catching people for him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, just as Jesus called his early disciples to fish for people, he has called us to tell others about his love so that we might bring them into the kingdom. Help us to be faithful to become fishers of people. Amen. We will now sing the second, two, or the second set of verses to hymn 403. We will now stand and turn to page 64 and repeat in unison the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of heaven and earth, we praise your name and we worship you. Grant us the courage to answer the call you have placed on our lives in baptism that we would share the good news of Jesus' love with all we meet. Help us to discern those places where you would have us go and show us the way to get there. We pray for missionaries in foreign lands that they would faithfully proclaim your love. Lord, in your mercy. Your Holy God, you are the giver of all good gifts. Help us to be content with all we have, that we would refrain from coveting the gifts and possessions of others. Guard our hearts and minds from jealousy and greed, that we would not seek our own interests, but your divine purposes, that we would dedicate our lives to serving you and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Almighty God, you know our needs before we can even speak them. Grant your healing mercy to all who suffer this day in body, mind, or spirit. Remind them of your never-failing love and abiding presence, and bring them peace. Allow those who are sick to turn over their cares and control to you. Lord, in your mercy. God of strength be with all those who are serving in the military, either at home or away. Protect them as they serve and keep their families safe while they are apart. We give you thanks for their faithful service and trust your guiding hand will be upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, also with you. and we will forego that, and at this time we will have the offering.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Signs of your gracious love, receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will begin then on page 68. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we sing your name and join their unending hymn. The next part is the blessing of the sacraments, and Pastor already did that, and so we will now pray the prayer that the Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. leave it there. Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord looked upon you with favor and give you peace. Mm -hmm.